In this video, we'll learn what a session is and how we can save data that persists as long as a session is active. You'll learn about a session. You'll learn how to set session attributes. And you'll learn how to get data from a session attribute. Let's review how a web application works. A request comes in to our web server from the client. Immediately, request and response objects are created. The request and response objects will live as long as we're within one request and response cycle. The servlet handles the controlling part of our MVC, works to gather the resources and do much of the work, or use model classes to work with that. When the servlet is finished, it will call the appropriate JSP to handle the view of the MVC, which will be concerned with sending the response. The request and response objects are typically available throughout this cycle. When the client does a few things after receiving the response, it may then send another request back to our application. At this time, we have new request and response objects. These will be active until the response is sent back to the client, which again could send more requests later. Hence, we get new request and response. So using the request and response objects, we have the capability of keeping data that will persist from the time the request is received by the web server until such time as the response is sent back to the client. However, sometimes we want to keep data longer than this. For instance, think about applications where you come to it with the first request and it asks for or seems to know your name. Maybe it says, hi, Craig at the top of the page on every page where you make requests to. Then this data is stored and kept and shown up on every page through every request and response cycle. How is that done? It turns out that when the first request is received, not only do we get a request and response object for that particular request, we also start an object called a session. A session is basically active from the time you get your first request to our web server until such time as you leave our web application. Maybe you close your browser or you do a logout on our system or simply browse to some other site. So this session object persists from the first request until you leave the site. And much like the request object, it has the capability of storing some data as attributes. So as we'll see, if we want data that lasts as long as a session, the appropriate place to put it is as an attribute on the session object. Here in Eclipse, we have a simple example to illustrate how this would work. We have the following components, three view components in our web content. The first one, index.jsp, simply has a form where we can enter some data. This data will be sent along with the first request to the page to servlet. At this point, a request and response object corresponding to that request are created, but in addition, a session object. In actuality, the session object was created with our very first request to index.jsp. But since it lasts as long as we are conducting a session on the site, it's also available here. In this code, we get the data, we'll do something to store it, and then we will pass execution on to page2.jsp, which will receive the request and response. So any data on the request response is also available to page2.jsp, but also any data on the session. Page2.jsp will then get any data necessary, this time from the session, and we'll explore that in more detail a little bit later and it will display that data in a table. There will also be a form with a simple button that says go ahead and go to page 3 servlet. Page 3 servlet will simply pass execution on to page 3 JSP so no new data was sent with the request nor is any new data created in the do get method. We simply move along to the view and in the view we're going to attempt to see if the data is available if it is available, we will show it as a new table, 
and if it's not we're going to create a message that says session state does not last past the life of the session so this is solely to illustrate that data that we receive early may or may not be available throughout the session if we use the appropriate method here we are with the application running just to see how it's going based on our description earlier we'll type in a name I'm going to hit go to send our second request. Remember the first was to receive this page. The data will be taken off the request object as it's sent along with this form and it'll be added to session attribute. Then the view component page2.jsp will be implemented. It will retrieve data from the session and attempt to show it in a table. And here we see that. Notice we see an extra item that's an attribute here, the session ID. So in addition to the data from the session that we put on here, automatically a session ID was added. This is one way that the server will keep up with our particular session, because it has a unique ID. When I click the button to go to page 3, a new request and response are created, but the same session should be available. It's accessed by the session ID. And if such, page 3.jsp will attempt to get the data from the session and show it. So if the data persists longer than one single request response cycle or throughout a session, we should see it on the next page. If not, we're going to see an error message. Here we are on page three. The only way you can tell that is the title has been changed to page three or you may look in the URL. But we see the exact same table. What this shows us is that data which was added to the session persists longer than a single request response. In actuality, it persists till the end of the session. So if I close Firefox now, short time after that, the server will close the session. When we come in next time to run it, kind of remember that our session ID currently is 1HJV. It starts with that. And we'll see if the next time we run it, we get a new session ID. So let's quit Firefox so that the session is over. In addition, just to ensure that that occurs, I'm going to delete the server. So we'll definitely get a new session ID next time. Let's now have a look, more detailed look at the code. Once again, here's the form that accepts data from the user and will send it with the request to do page two, the page two servlet. The page two servlet, we will take the data that was provided on the form remember these are parameters of the request object we'll create a student object using our model class student and then we're going to add that as a session attribute we have to do that in two steps in a servlet first we need to get a hold of the session object to do that we use our request object and we use a method called get session as we can see by the description shown here, this will return an HTTP session object. So I've declared one on the left of this statement. I've just called it simply session. And once I retrieve it using the getSession method, I'm storing it here. The reason we used request.getSession rather than a constructor for the session is we want to get the exact session that is associated with this request and not just a brand new one from a constructor. Once we now have a handle on the session object, we can then use its set attribute method to store data to this session as an attribute. We do that by providing two arguments. First is a label. Primarily the label just identifies what we're storing so that we can retrieve it later. And then we provide the value that needs to be stored there. And this time the data is a student object. So at this point we've created a session based on the current one with this request and we've added the student object. Let's have a look at page two. Page two, the first thing we do is we work to get the student off of the session so we can use it here locally. Since we used set attribute before, this time to get the attribute, we use the get attribute method of the session object. We provide the label for the data we want. As we can see from get attribute, it will return an object data type. When we put the data on the session as an attribute, 
you can think of it as compressing or scrunching up our student object into a generic object size. So when we retrieve the data from the session, it is currently an object size, a standard size called object. So, but we need to uncompress it or unscrunch it back to the data type that we want, which is a student class. We're doing that with something called casting. So you can see we've included in parentheses in front of our getAttribute method something that tells it what this object should be converted to. So we get the attribute which is stored with the label student. It is currently object size. We cast it, convert it to a student class, which is what it was before, and then we can assign it to a local object we've declared called student. So if that works, we can then use the student object to create a table, and we've seen that work, and we saw that working as we ran the code. At the end, we can click a button to ask for a new view, new request. That will take us to page three. Page three servlet, totally new request and response object, but the same session should be available. Page three servlet simply passes execution onto page three dot JSP. We get there. We do the same thing. We attempt to get our student attribute. This time though, as we're trying to illustrate whether or not it exists, we wrap it in a try catch so that if it doesn't exist, we can do something like an error message. In the try, if it does exist, we simply print out the table again. But if it does not persist on the session, we show this error message. We're going to run it one more time to review how this is working. As running this on the server really is generating our very first request to get us index.jsp, a request and response object are created, even though they're not used for that view, and a session object is started. So index.jsp was requested, a request and response object with index.jsp were created but not used in our code, and a session object was already created. As I put in a name, hit go, a new request and response will be generated, but the same session will be used. We'll create a student object with the name Victor, and that will be added to the session object. The view will then display the get the value off the session and display it in a table. We see that the session ID is YVF, different than our previous session from earlier in the video. When I click page three, a new request is sent. A new request and response object will be created by the server, but the same session will be available. So what I should see as we get the attribute data off the session, the same table with exactly the same student name, age, and GPA because the same student is stored on the session, but also the session ID. If it does not persist through this next request response cycle, we'll see an error message. Here we are on page three and the table looks exactly the same, so the data has persisted. In this video, you have learned about a session. You've learned how to set session attributes using the set attribute method of the session object, and you have seen that they would persist as long as the session is active. You've also learned how to get the session attributes using the get attribute method of the session object, and how to cast them back to their original object shape. This has been a Piercy production.